Hello guys, welcome back to Foxy Box's map making with Sparks. Uh, today we're going to start off the episode by doing some texturing for some for some uh, modeling um, for the jail cell room at the beginning of the game. So I've actually gone ahead and um, already made this texture, but then I thought maybe I should have showed kind of what I'm doing. So um, I'm just going to go through it again. So this is a, a tiled floor texture, and I'm going to show you roughly what I did, although I don't think I can get it as well, we'll see. It might be better than last time. Who knows? Um, so I'm in Photoshop right now. I've uh, created a 128 by 128 pixel squared. Um, I don't know what it's called. Uh, canvas. And I went and got myself a brush, which is sort of a very smooth, um, soft brush. And I had the angle set to, uh, to 90 degrees. And then I basically just went and chose a slightly darker shade than the one that the background is made of and did this and kind of drew. That's very faint, isn't it? Let's zoom in a little bit. Um, kind of drew little marks like this to add some texture. And then I went and changed the uh, orientation of the brush back to zero to uh, do it in the other direction, so we had this kind of cross pattern going across. And I'm not a texturer at all, this is not my forte, this is not an area I'm used to working in at all, so I have no idea what I'm talking about here. After that I went into filter and I went to pixelate and crystallize, and you can kind of see, can I zoom in here? Yeah I can, you can sort of see that you can crystallize the texture and it sort of pixelates a little bit, so I went for quite a soft pixelation of 9, and that just adds a little bit of you know, mottled variation, less of a sort of brush stroke feel, more of a slightly bumpy surface feel. And then just to detract from that effect a little bit, I went with a smudge tool uh, with a strength of 27 or so, and I just drew across it a little bit just to soften the effect. Um, I think I chose a colour that was too close in contrast this time around. But you get this sort of slightly smudged, slightly textured feel to it. Um, after that I went and chose a much darker colour for the border of the tile and used the square tool to draw a one pixel border around each edge of the square like so and then I got the smudge tool again and I just smudged that edge like this to create the the edge of the tile going sort of in from the corners like this so that you get a dark bit at the corner. I have no idea how this is going to look and Maybe people will have um, ideas or opinions with a capital O about this. Um, and that was basically it. Uh, this one over here, I think, looks a little nicer or possibly too busy. I don't know. But um, hopefully we can use this texture as the tiled floor of our um, starting sort of lab room setting. And hopefully we can use the same block for the wall, ceiling and floor because um, we can texture the top of the block and the side of the block and the bottom of the block differently. Um, so we'll have to see how that looks in Minecraft. It might look terrible, um, but we're going to be right back once I've textured the uh, the block with this on the top. Okay, so here I am in the red mushroom block underscore C model file. I'm not entirely sure which mushroom block this is, but I figure the mushroom blocks are a good one to go with because they have a lot of textures to them, so we can keep things nice and neat in our creative menu. Um, so we can see that we've got the particle here, which doesn't really matter because people are not going to be breaking these blocks, but I think what we want to change is the blocks texture. So I've called the model um, tiled floor, tiled floor. So we should just be able to edit that and see it in the resource pack. Okay, well here's the moment of truth. I'm going to set block a red mushroom block. It's not that one. Let's try damage of one. Let's try damage of two. Let's try damage of three. It's one of these. There's a lot of them. There we go. Wow, okay. I can't uh, place these, but I can fill an area and we'll see how they look. Okay, well, whoops. <laughs> I just fell into a pit of despair. Um, could be worse. Um, I, this is something I'm slightly worried about with this project. Like, I'm really enjoying the fact that people are all contributing their own textures and things to it but there's a slight danger that we are going to end up with um, a feeling of inconsistency in the textures that we have and this is what I'm noticing right here this looks very different from the crates like in general I think it looks kind of cool um, maybe the tiles should be a tad smaller or cleaner like maybe the edges should be a little bit less 
dark, but it's got that sort of almost watercolory feel to it, which is a nice style in itself, um, I suppose, but it doesn't really look like the crates do very much. Um, I don't know if they feel kind of out of place together, because this is a lot... All of the textures are very pixelated and sharp. And I suppose in, in that sense, the style is more close to Minecraft. And then this is all very smooth. So maybe these tiles need to be less soft. Maybe a lower resolution image may be more pixelated and less sort of smoothly drawn. I'm not sure. Um, for now, I think just for this episode, we're going to leave it like this and we can redo the texturing later. I'm going to try doing the walls next. Which we'll just uh, we'll we'll texture it to the side of the mushroom block here. Okay, so I've got a plan for this one. So I'm going to untick this layer so that we have just the borderless version of this. And if we if we tiled these on a wall right now, there would be sort of a sharp cut right here where the textures on either end don't line up. So this is a trick that I don't remember where I learned, but basically what you can do is you can select half of this, right, approximately half. I can go new layer via cut. And this is now basically, oh, I <laughs> cut the wrong layer, oops. Uh, let's select the correct layer and do layer new layer via cut. And this is effectively halved, halved our texture. So what we can do now is we can take this texture and we can move it to this side. And we can take this, this texture and we can move it to this side. And you can now see that split down the middle. Um, when we we can now merge these together, uh, merge layers, which was I think was off off screen for you guys, and then we can do the same thing in the opposite direction. Uh, what this basically does is it shows us how how it will look, but we can then smooth over these these edges. So layer new layer via cut, move this one down to the bottom. There we go, and this one up to the top, and merge them together again. So now we should be able to use the smudge tool to smooth this transition so that it isn't so sharp. Like so. Oh, I've got skills, right? <laughs> um, I don't really remember where I learned this. Um, but I think it I think it happened when I was working on a game, like a long time ago before I did YouTube. So we've got a bit of a gray line here which I'd like to get rid of a little bit because it's too okay so that's that's about right like that so this will now tile seamlessly and that's the trick haha <laughs> you've learned something today hopefully okay so our sides should now be textured yep yeah, we've got sort of a lab wall texture here and I feel like it's a little bit too textured but uh, let's let's build a wall anyway just for the sake of it okay so we can now have a um, a nice white wall here um, which fairly much matches the floor we've got these lines down the middle which is where we join the textures together which it doesn't seem quite smooth enough for a lab um, and I thought I'd raised the contrast uh, sorry um, raised the brightness and um, I think I basically just need to smooth a little more and make it less textured, which actually the pixelation thing we talked about earlier might help with anyway. So we now have a block which acts as both the the floor and the wall, which is kind of nice. So we're basically, we start the game in a mushroom, I suppose. <laughs> um, and then the last thing we want to do is a ceiling, which is probably going to be pretty much the same texture as the walls. Maybe we should do a a tiled ceiling, but with a much softer edge for the for the tiles on the top uh, I think that will look fairly fairly nice um, a lot of offices and labs and things have got basically the structure of the building and then they have a lot of pipes for air conditioning and electrical cables and things like that and then they've just got this sort of thin um, I don't know like wooden or wood pulp um, tiling which you can stand on a chair and you can just push and lift it up and see and get into the into the crawl space and the ceiling. So I feel like that's the kind of tile an area like this would probably have. So we're going to go for pretty much this texture here, but we're going to make the edges of this a lot sharper 
because there's not sort of little bits of dust and grime that have slowly collected on the edges and uh, a lot brighter as well so that it's just a very soft um, edge and I think that'll do it ready it's reloading and the walls have changed I've um, increased the brightness and the contrast quite a bit it's still got that annoying stripe pattern but we're getting there and finally uh, the ceiling should oh I forgot to apply the texture to the uh, underside of the mushroom block be right back Alley oop. okay um, possibly still too much. Um, we'll have to see how it looks. I'm gonna make a proper, proper big room over here. A girt big room. There we have it. Um, let me get some lighting in here a second. Just gonna make some skylights. That feels all right. That's kind of um, officey. Not too bad. Um, I think the ceiling tiles may need to reduce contrast. Also, that corner joins a bit weirdly. I think I may remove the smudging from the tech from this texture and uh, just make the edge a lot fainter. Are you ready? It's reloading and bam! Much much milder, much softer uh, texture edge. I. Th this is looking kind of nice. Um, like I said, not a texture expert. There are probably people crying um, watching this video right now who, who who do texturing going, Sparks, what are you doing? It doesn't work. Um, but uh, hopefully this is like, it's my. I think it's not too bad for my first foray into texturing. Um, I'm actually a lot happier with the walls and ceiling than I am the floor in the, in the respect of matching the other parts of this game. Although perhaps these should be a lot more pixely as well. It's kind of hard to say. I'm I'm a little worried. I think I may be right in saying that we shouldn't mix styles in this game. So I'm probably going to heavily pixelate these. Or I, I guess I'll leave it open to people to, to make their own changes and submit them if they wish. Because I like involving people in this. And I think people enjoy submitting things. So um, oh, another advantage to this is we can technically have a second floor up here <laughs> without having to... Um, waste two blocks of space placing a floor block and a ceiling block, but that feels kind of nice actually um, I ended up using the texture of the wall for the ceiling not the floor because it's a lot softer um, But I think that's kind of nice um, whew, um, I suppose we need to actually do a cage as well uh, like a some sort of small cage that we can look out of um and I guess that there's probably a few other things that could go in this room, some tables. Uh, we're going to have to work out some sort of lighting, some sort of lamp uh, or ceiling light, which will probably have to be some kind of transparent block that we can just place a light block um, above. I think we can probably go for like an indented halogen light. Um, they look kind of cool. Um, so what blocks are transparent and can be oriented north, south, or east, west? That's the question. I suppose orientation isn't a huge requirement because we can just have two separate blocks, one for north, south, and one for east, west. Jack-o'-lanterns can be oriented um, and give off light. But I'm worried that if we use if we use a block with a unique property, like giving off light, of which there are a few, we won't be able to use them elsewhere. Um, and it might almost be worth making the light blocks invisible, like remove their texture entirely, so that we can use them for ambient lighting. Um, so I'm kind of reluctant to use those. Okay, well, I've kind of added these strip light things. I'm not hugely happy with them. Um, I assign them to the... Um, to the stained glass. Uh, oh, that's weird. What did it just do there? I like have both textures there. Um, so I assigned it to the black stained glass um, model, and it kind of looks okay. I wanted it to be translucent, so it's got this like translucent white glass thing, and then it's got the two halogen bars for the light emission, and then. Technically, I have... It also has a weird weird way of rendering things, I've just noticed. Um, technically, I wanted to have that texture visible from below, but it, because it's a glass block, it culls the texture you've 
uh, from the opposite face to the one you're looking at. So I just put a sea lantern behind them. Um, so that didn't go too well. Also, they're like rendering weirdly, it looks like, where I think if it's invisible and then visible or something, it just kind of pops out and it renders them in the wrong order. So that's kind of annoying. But I've had enough of playing around with strip lights for for the moment. Um, I have to say, um, BD Pro is taking some getting used to. It took me a long time to work out how to texture things, which was annoying. It also doesn't render, render them in a line very well. The faces kind of mess up. So possibly this would have to be made out of several block models or something. I'm not sure. Um, ah, well. So something I'm looking at here is the, um, is the iron bars because they have some, uh, they have a few un uh, sort of interesting properties which could be useful here. So first of all, um, we should be able to texture them differently depending on which way they're facing and on whether they're on a corner or not because they have a different model for each orientation. So that's one, two, three, um, four, five, six, seven different m models there, I suppose. Uh, and interestingly, um, something that we ha that I've discovered while working on this is that um, block blocks don't render their texture when seen from the inside. So um, if you have, oh, actually Renard is probably a good example. We've got our Fox model in here somewhere. Uh, you can see when I put him down that you can see through the floor um, when he's placed down. If we go down, oh, uh, if we were to um, use a transparent block, then it will probably show, show the floor below him. So um, his face is kind of dark, isn't it? Uh, anyway, so we'll get this if we place it against a wall as well. Um, oh, that's weird. <laughs> anyway, so if you are inside the block, um, it doesn't render any other faces, uh, which means that to make a jail, to make a, a cell like this, for us to start the game in that we're locked in and will via storyline escape from, uh, we need this room to have a have a uh, a model which we can see from both sides, and that doesn't have a weird hitbox on one end. For example, if we if we textured a solid block to look like the inside of a cell wall, we'd either have to make the entire cell wall really thick, um, or we would have only one like a thin block model, but the hitbox would still be here, and we'd be sort of unable to walk right against the wall, which would feel odd. So I'm going to try and going for the um, for the um, panes here, and I'm going to texture the panes in this orientation to be the same as this wall on the outside, maybe, and then, or, or, or you know, have some sort of wall texture, and then the ones in this orientation I will have like a, a, a chicken wire mesh or some kind of mesh texture, and then on the corner here, because this is its own model, I think we can make it so that um, we have both textures kind of mixed together in there. So um, we can try that or possibly the entire thing could be a mesh. I'm not sure. So I've just in, uh, opened Iron Bar's cap in Cubic Pro and it looks like it just generates the end of the Iron Bar. I'm gonna have a look at this one a second. Um, this one seems to have a slightly offset version of the cap so we're gonna have to make sure we texture those. And then I suppose there's a few other iron bars here as well. There's the post. That's just the post, I suppose. The one when there's no texture applied, which we don't need to worry about. What else do we have? Uh, iron bar post ends. <laughs> it's made out of lots of different model files, it looks like. Um, which I wasn't exactly expecting. Hopefully we can still use this in the way that I wanted. Uh, it does appear that... There's only one model file for this, uh, as in, like, we can't... I'm not sure if we can have a different module for north-east, as uh, north-south and east-west, uh, because maybe there's just some sort of orientation element in there. 
So I'm looking at the model file that we just looked at in Cubic Pro, and it looks like... I'm not really sure what I'm looking at here. Um, like, is this code? I'm, I may have to talk to somebody about this, <laughs> um, about, about texturing based on orientation, because this is all... I don't, I'm not really fluent with reading these, uh, with these model files yet. Um, so maybe we'll tackle the jail cell next episode, but we got some texturing done and we got some, you know, some stuff done in this episode. So before we did end the episode, I did want to quickly go over something. Uh, this is a map, a, uh, Foxy Boxes map that was sent in by Polyboy. Um, and I actually quite like it. It has a playtime of about one and a half minutes, which is short-ish, but an acceptable uh, play length, I think, and uh, I just think it looks pretty neat. Um, the grass is bright blue <laughs> because of my color mapping, but we've got sort of we've got some mushrooms, um, which is kind of cool. And I'll I'll just sort of run through it. Um, something I wanted to address from last episode uh, is that a lot of people um, were saying that I can use the um, the play time uh, the the attack time of the tool to stop the bobbing effect. Uh, and that is a good point. Oh, oh, my mouth just went crazy there. Um, that, that's a good point. Uh, I think you could uh, stop it doing the bobbing and have the screen, uh, have the text appear on screen without... Oh, I just completely failed there. As you can have the um, texture of the selection menu I'm just going to fly, not um, bobbed up and down when you change selections uh, using the attack time speed. And I think that's a good point. A lot of people said that. Um, and to be honest, I prefer it scratched on the jail cell wall. I think it looks really cool there. And I'm going to keep it there for now. But for other menu options, perhaps we will revisit that technique. Um, so, yeah, the other thing I wanted to mention is, uh, firstly... Uh, I understand that you might want to make a comment before you... Wow, it's raining so hard outside right now. I understand that you might want to make a comment um, as you hear something in the video um, before you finish watching um, so that you don't forget. I would suggest writing the comment but not posting it because sometimes the question is answered later in the video or the solution is found later in the video. And there's a lot of people commenting saying, you should do this. Oh, you fixed it. Um, and like re replying to their own comment. Or... Man, it's crazy out there. <laughs> it's raining really hard. I like it. Um, some people are posting the same comment as like 10 other people, which I guess kind of emphasizes it for me, which is nice. But at the same time, it's a bit annoying, slightly annoying to have to read the same comment like 10 times. Um, and the final thing is if this is an old video and it wasn't just posted, um, a solution may have been found later on as well. But in general, thank you very much for... For commenting and being so involved in this series, uh, I do appreciate it a lot. Um, even just positive comments like, uh, oh, thanks, uh, you know, great video, um, looking forward to seeing where it goes, things like that. Or, you know, constructive things that are showing me, uh, you know, fixing problems, submitting block models. It's great that you're all so involved. Um, all of the textures and models that I created in today's video are available in the GitHub repository in the video description, as always. Um, so uh, I'm really glad that I'm able to involve you guys in the process of making this map as much as I am. So I really like this uh, this layout actually, it's got a really nice sort of mushroom forest feel to it. Uh, obviously I need to uh, fix this uh, grass colour mapping so that it's less of a crazy blue because it doesn't contrast with the path very well. But um, yeah, Polyboy's Boy's done a really good job, I like the layout a lot. I th it looks like it might have been built with um, with World Painter or World Editor or something, um, but it's got a very nice feel to it. I think I may use this one uh, as, as one of the levels. Um, a lot of people have sent in um, layouts as well. They're just a little bit too short um, to really be used. Uh, so try and keep the playtime at least one and a half minutes to to sprint through, which is what this one is. Um, although preferably I'd, I'd like to make it maybe like five minutes or something like that for a level to run through. Um, but yeah, we're getting along quite nicely here. Next episode, we will work on... Um, the jail cell, modeling that room a bit more. We need we need more models in there, like just tables and papers and posters on the wall or whatever it is that you find in a in a laboratory. And um, we will continue on from there. I also want to play around with some 
custom particle effects as well, because um, there is a new effect with thrown potions now uh, that I want to explore uh, for a, for a, an aesthetic feature, possibly next episode. Uh, I was going to do it this episode as well, but uh, we're kind of out of time. So thank you for watching, thank you for being involved, uh, and just, yeah, thanks guys. I will see you in the next episode.